have been asked to address you on sri lanka's twin crisis one has already started economic crisis in sri lanka i need not go back to the past as to how we deprived ourselves of our foreign exchange how we decided that we go out uh, to it alone and how the facts were concealed not only from the people but from parliament and from the members of the then government the second and stemming from it is also a political crisis a reflection of the loss of confidence in a political system which allowed the country to go down to this level so this is what we are grappling with there is the second crisis the second crisis is the global impact of the ukraine crisis we are only seeing the beginning of it the increase in fuel it will get much worse as it goes along as it goes along you will find most probably be a shortage of food the food shortage will go globally till 2024 <clears throat> after all the uh, russia and ukraine are the largest one is the largest producer of grain other is the fifth largest you cannot export the russian grain and ukraine whatever is left cannot be sent out <clears throat> their ports are closed by the russians and their rail track gauge is different from that of poland so each carriage has to be lifted and put on to the polish track you can't send food out that way and many of their fields of the agriculture area are destroyed even if the war stops tomorrow it will take ukraine at least 3 years to get its cultivation back on track then the rising price of fuel the rising price of corn again the shortage of fertilizers so how does it hit it is the whole world there's a shortage of fertilizer in california there's a shortage of fertilizer in brazil how do you meet it and there's going to be a shortage of food already countries are banning the export of food that's the second one you have that you are facing so what is going to happen no no we are not going to add the ukraine crisis to the sri lanka crisis that is not the impact the impact is going to be the sri lankan crisis multiplied by the ukraine crisis so this is only the beginning and just for the shortage of dollars and rupees we have already shaken the political system i came today from a leading of meeting of uh, the political party leaders in parliament and they have arrived at a consensus on how the 21st how the new amendment should be brought in and sure amendment that will avoid any provision which will require referendum but will that do as this crisis gets worse there are going to be many countries affected by the ukraine crisis some say 40 some say 70 but we are unique they are only getting affected with the until the ukraine crisis took place there and the impact came their economies were normal not in our case we have already started suffering so where do we go from here we didn't go early enough to the imf take the case of zambia they went early but it got delayed because the chinese and the others could not agree now they've come to an agreement it has to go staff agreement it has to go to the imf board to be finalized but in the meantime because of the ukrainian crisis 
the price of copper has gone up. So they can manage with what they are getting now until they get the Ukrainian, until you get the assistance from IMF. Ours is different. We are losing our sources of foreign exchange. So this is what we are faced with. And we, as I said, this is only the beginning. At the moment, there are no queues for petrol. What you don't understand is that I have to do the job not only of the Prime Minister but a firefighter. Every morning from where can you find 20 million dollars, 30 million dollars, 40 million dollars to pay for a ship? If we miss one, then there will be a shortage that day. You can't carry on a government like this. The problem we face now is so bad that what will happen when the Ukraine crisis comes on is another story. We have run down our economy. We have state enterprises owning trillions and trillions of rupees to the banks. We have enterprises that are losing. We have projects which will not benefit Sri Lanka. There are no priority list. Even till recently, everyone, different agencies were actually using the different credit lines to order what they wanted. There was no priority. If someone said, I want fertilizer, that was there. If someone said, I want petrol, fuel, it was there. We had to establish a priority order and uh, sort of centralize the distribution, uh, the access to the foreign credit lines. So this is just a start of what we have to do. The worst is still to come. As you know, we may not have food. And we, we are, our food supplies are enough until about September, October. Because we didn't have enough fertilizer either for Maha or for Yala. Now we are trying to have, uh, get fertilizer for the next Maha season. If we do, then we will certainly be self-sufficient by February next year. What do you do in between? As the economy fails, more and more jobs are being lost. More and more enterprises, big and small, are collapsing. This is what we are going for. Time will come when people may not eat three meals a day. If they survive, they, they may need two meals. The situation will come for some of our people. We have to avoid hunger. Is there an end to it? Well, we are talking with our other nations, the friendly nations, to get help. There is light at the end of the tunnel. But to ensure there are no earth slips while we go through the tunnel. That's the problem. We cannot get through this year by ourselves. We need a few billion dollars to come from outside. Otherwise this country cannot survive. We need to get that money. We have to reach out again to the people we rejected. To the Japanese, who has been our friends from the 1952 <coughs> to today, who are hurt by what happened. Which country rejects $3 billion worth of aid without a thank you, without even having a negotiation? Just say we don't want it. Then how do you bring back confidence with those people? We are lucky that India has come forward to help us. 
at the hour of our need. Other countries are chipping in. China has come with assistance, but someone in the government went and negotiated a loan, the swap, which we cannot use. We have to look at Europe and the West, but unfortunately the West are also holding, China also has a problem of its uh, COVID and the downturn in the economy. The West is having a problem. One is the inflation that is raging there, the price of fuel has gone up, and secondly, they are putting their money into Ukraine. Over a hundred billion dollars have gone into Ukraine. 100 billion less for the rest of the world. So it is essential that we do, that we get help from our friends and make up with them. If the fault is ours, we should apologize. If the fault is there, tell them it's your fault. You can't have friend relations with countries and then throw them aside. Some official decides we don't want it, how your high is, and that's the end of it. What is the end result? We are starving. Whenever we had a problem earlier, it was Japan who bailed us out. I remember during the Kuwait war, when all our people had to return from the Gulf, and uh, President Premadasa sent me to Japan to meet Prime Minister Kaifu. He took the letter, he put it on a side, said yes, I'll ask my people to uh, study it. And then before I went, I was told, there are $600 million for you. $600 million in 1990 is a big thing. That is how we work. Today it's different. So I have to spend time rebuilding trust with these people, talking with them, to increase assistance. They have, some of the countries have promised the government earlier with assistance, but that's not enough. We have to reach out to the ones like Japan. India had started the process, China had come in, but Japan is needed and the West is needed. <coughs> then we have to sit down. We have talked with the IMF. Push through agreement soon. There are a large number of countries waiting to go up to the direct board. And at the same time, we have to decide on our debt. What are we going to do? How is the consortium going to work? Because the Chinese criteria is different from that of others. So how do you ensure that all of them share the burden equally, though the systems may be different. This is another issue that we are facing. We have to get all of them together, who is going to summon the consortium, where are they going to meet, and how are they going to agree. So we have to speak to all the members to see how we can help to iron out the differences. So this is the situation we are in. To go forward, we need their help. We have to get their help. Then only we can start working out within the country. Otherwise, we will find that gradually the economy is slowly coming to a halt in different sectors. Already the construction industry is coming to a halt. Tourism has fallen by the wayside. Two are major sectors of the economy. Into this, we have to ensure that people at least are fed. Food is available. So we would like to start, we are going to start a food security program of cultivating our own food. And that will have to go on till 2024. Because 2023 also may be a bad year globally. So 2024, we have to go on. And I hope that all of you and others will join in this effort. Within this, we are working an economic stabilization program. 
I have appointed a council and they will be meeting, stabilize the economy, make the money available and revive the economy and uh, ensure that the real economy starts functioning again. But that is not enough. The next is how do we recover? What are we going to do? <coughs> then we have to find bridging finance <coughs> till the IMF comes through and others come in. How are we going to recover? That we must decide the principle. Remember, at the end of this exercise of stabilizing, our debt would have gone up higher. The 50 billion would have gone up more. Then every year we will have to keep borrowing. So how are we going to repay it? If we don't repay it, within three to four years we come back to the same position. <coughs> that we have to remember. We have to have a new economy. The old word will not answer. We have to earn more money, more dollars. Then we must have export-oriented economy. For the export-oriented economy to function, we must be highly competitive. We have to restructure the economy. We have to make it outward looking. Your business must be able to go out to create markets, new businesses, services, maybe logistics and expansion of IT or many other sectors. Now you have to come to the next problem. Our professionals are leaving the country. How are I going to feel it? So these are what we are now focusing on. I think all of you should also focus on how do we recover. How do we start earning money? Not merely, the, not merely arriving at a surplus on the primary budget, <coughs> a surplus overall, and a balance of trade surplus. These are difficult things that we have not achieved before. But I am confident we work together, go in the correct position, we will achieve it. We have to ensure that this is only a short period. We go through this year and part on next year. And we can start recovering so by 2025 we can get back to having a break-even budget or a primary surplus. Then you bring in a new economy where all of us have to work. Where we have to be able to earn foreign exchange, to open up the country. The old system has failed. We try to look inwards. We didn't encourage investments that came in. I find a large number of applications for investments stuck somewhere. The departments are not moving. So we have to think anew, bring a new structure and to do all that, a new mindset. What can you do? Kindly create that new mindset. That is the start. No one knows of the living. Some of the countries ask, all right, before we help you, have you helped yourself? What have you done to raise this money? Now, I have to answer that. Without that, we can't go. People can get onto the street and demonstrate, we don't want to do this, we don't want to do that. But at the end of the day, if we don't help ourselves, no one else will help us. So we have to get ready to go through a tough time and to change the system. Changing the system and bringing this export oriented I don't think is going to help Iran very much. But his sons and his daughters and his grandsons and the granddaughters are going to have a new Sri Lanka. That's what we are working for. A Sri Lanka that is prosperous. Let this experience be our last experience with this bitter politics. Let's think anew. And that comes back to the constitution. We based ourselves on the British constitution. The majority has the power, the minority starts talking and shouting, that's all. But then we change the first past the post into a PR system. Now you are going to remove the presidency. Then do you want to go back to the English system, the Westminster system, 
or do you want to have one in which there is more cooperation, like the old Donomo system, the state council system? This is one issue that everyone has to think of. I have given some proposals which make the parliament work together, but that's only the beginning. So think of it and remember that this is the beginning of a new journey. Think anew and start traveling anew. Thank you.